Welcome to Ochenta Stories, recorded in bedrooms, living rooms, closets, and balconies in quarantine around the world. Artists, writers, creators, podcasters, and more answer the question, what do you want to hear when this pandemic is over? I'm your host this week, Luis Lopez. This week's episode is about a young woman who misses her urban oasis, her apartment, and soon discovers a whole different meaning to the term new normal. The story, originally produced in Spanish, has been translated into English, and you can hear that version later on in the episode. And now, without further ado, The Cockroach, by Milagros Rodriguez Caro. La cuarentena estaba pasando bien, ni lento ni rápido, a un paso normal para hacer una cuarentena, supongo. Yo estaba en la casa de mis padres, en el campo, ese lugar tan verde y amplio y sin embargo yo salía al jardín y me obligaba a no extrañar la ciudad. Me senté en el pasto a hacer una videollamada con una amiga. Un trasplante tan repentino no es algo que venga sin complicaciones, ¿sabes? No es tan fácil. Tenés suerte de estar donde estás para pasar este momento. Mi amiga me empezó a contar algo sobre el consorcio de su edificio y de los ruidos del vecino de arriba. Yo no podía concentrarme en lo que me contaba. La interrumpí. Tengo la sensación de que algo está creciendo en mi departamento. Un día empecé a tener una sensación de que algo crecía. No podía sostener la idea, trataba de tomarla en el aire y darle forma, ver qué era eso que crecía. Algo está creciendo, le dije a mi mamá mientras la miraba lavar los platos con los antebrazos apoyados en la barra del comedor diario. No estarás embarazada vos, ¿no? Ay mamá, ¿cómo voy a estar embarazada? Tenés razón, me dijo, y siguió lavando un vaso. Me puse a escribir una lista de las cosas que dejé mal en el apuro, en el escape. Saqué la basura antes de irme, estoy segura. ¿No? Sí. Y corté el agua. Saqué lo que pude de la heladera, pero no sé ni qué había adentro, y el fumigador no venía hace meses. Igual solo pasan por la cocina. Las cucarachas, digo. Me imaginé la puerta de la heladera ligeramente abierta. Me quise acordar si había dejado algo de comida que se estuviera pudriendo. No pude. Forcé el olor a podrido, casi que llegué a sentirlo. Un tomate, algo verde. Tengo que volver. Cuando llegué a mi edificio estaba encantada. Me subí al ascensor con todos los bártulos y sonreí al espejo. Con barbijo, las sonrisas son solo ojos. Piso 2. Piso 5. Piso 8. Piso 11. Acá estoy. Después de tanto tiempo encerrada en el campo, vuelvo a mi oasis citadino. Saqué la llave y la giré despacio. Sin apuro. No quería apurarme ahora. Abrí la puerta y me di vuelta para recuperar mis cosas del pasillo. ¿Te ayudo en algo? Me dijo una voz. Viene desde adentro, pensé. Desde el departamento. Hubo como una fracción de segundo en la que pensé si había dejado la computadora ahí o que era el encargado, pero no, esta voz venía de alguien que no salía de una pantalla. El encargado estaba abajo. Me di vuelta y la vi. Una cucaracha, como de un metro sesenta, sentada en mi silla de escritorio. ¿Cómo tenés la llave? Fue lo primero que atiné a decir. Me dijo que se la había dado el encargado. Yo pensé, claro, durante la cuarentena se murió la propietaria y yo no tenía contrato de alquiler. Este departamento es apenas mío, 
es menos mío que casi todas mis cosas. Me detuve a mirarla. Cuando compré la silla de escritorio nunca pensé si la iba a usar una cucaracha. Me sorprendió verla limpia a la cucaracha y me pregunté si cuando decimos que son sucias hablamos de ellas o de que las asociamos con la suciedad. Esta era como de carey, con vetas un poco más anaranjadas, un marrón más ocre en la cabeza, pero hacia el suelo un poco más traslúcida. Las antenas eran enormes y me pareció que se movían como dando un mensaje. Le pasé la clave del wifi y me dijo que pasara. Me lo dijo con las antenas, pero lo entendí. Había un olor distinto en el departamento, pero no era algo malo. De hecho, olía mejor. Vi que había puesto uno de esos palitos aromatizantes que en general me parecen horribles, pero este era de vainilla y destilaba un aroma agradable. Dejé la valija a un costado de la cama y la cucaracha me preguntó si quería tomar algo. No, le dije, te agradezco. Me miró unos segundos, hizo un movimiento lento de antenas y siguió trabajando. Fui al almacén de la vuelta y compré unas papitas. Le ofrecí a mi compañera de cuarto, pero me dijo, no, gracias, yo como otras cosas. Miré a la cocina y me fijé en la basura, pero no había nada raro. De repente el departamento me pareció gigante, suficiente, más que eso, grande como para dos. Esa noche llamé a mis papás. Les dije que estaba todo bien, que al final no había dejado nada en la heladera, por suerte. The Cockroach by Milagros Rodríguez Caro in English. The quarantine was going well, neither slow nor fast, at a normal pace for a quarantine, I guess. I was at my parents' house in the countryside. That place was so green and wide, and yet I would go out into the garden and force myself not to miss the city. I sit on the grass and FaceTime with a friend. Such a sudden change isn't easy. It's so quiet here. I mean, you're lucky to be where you are right now. My friend started to tell me something about her building's consortium and the noises from the neighbor upstairs, and I couldn't concentrate on what she was telling me. I interrupt her. I have a feeling that something's growing in my apartment. One day, I started to have a feeling that something was growing. I couldn't get rid of the idea. I tried to take it in the air and give it shape to see what it was that was growing. Something is growing, I say to my mom as I watch her wash the dishes forearms resting on the counter of the dining table. That thing you say is growing. You're not pregnant, are you? Oh, mom, how can I be pregnant? You're right, she says, and she continued washing a glass. I start to write a list of the things I left wrong in the rush, in the escape. I took out the garbage before I left, I'm sure. Right? Yeah. And turned off the water. I took what I could out of the fridge, but I don't even know what was inside, and the fumigator hasn't come for months. Anyway, they only come through the kitchen. The cockroaches, I mean. I imagine the refrigerator door is slightly open. I wanted to remember if I had left any food that was rotting. I couldn't. I imagine the smell of rottenness out of the fridge. I could almost smell it. A tomato, something green. I must go back. When I get to my building, I'm thrilled. I get on the elevator with all my stuff and smile at the mirror. The mask covers my face so I can only see my eyes wrinkled at the ends with excitement to come home. Two, five, eight. 
Eleventh floor, here I am. After so long locked up in the countryside, I return to my city oasis. I take out the key and turn it slowly, without rushing. I don't want to hurry now. I open the door and turn around to retrieve my things from the hallway. Can I help you with something? A voice says to me. It's coming from inside, I thought, from the apartment. There's about a split second where I think maybe I had left the computer on, or that it was the building manager. But no, this voice was coming from someone inside. I turn around and see it. A cockroach about six feet tall, sitting in my desk chair. How do you have the key? Was the first thing I said. He tells me that the manager had given it to him. I thought, sure, during the quarantine, the landlady died and I didn't have a lease. This apartment is barely mine. It's less mine than most of my stuff. I stopped to look at it. When I bought the desk chair, I never thought it would be used by a cockroach. I was surprised to see it clean, the cockroach, and wondered if, when we say they are dirty, we are talking about them or that we associate them with dirt. This one was tortoise shell like, with slightly more orange streaks, a more ochre brown on the head, but towards the ground, a bit more translucent. The antenna were huge and seemed to be moving as if giving a message. I pass him the Wi Fi key and he tells me to come in. There is a different smell in the apartment, but it isn't a bad thing. In fact, it smelled better. I saw that he had put in some of those scent sticks that I generally find horrible, but this one was vanilla and it exuded a pleasant aroma. I set the suitcase on the side of the bed and the cockroach asked me if I want something to drink. I say, no thank you. It looked at me for a few seconds did a slow antenna movement, and continued working. I went to the grocery store around the corner and bought some chips. I offered my roommate, but it said, no thanks, I eat other things. I investigated the kitchen and noticed the garbage, but there was nothing unusual. Suddenly, the apartment seemed gigantic to me, big enough for two. That night, I called my parents told them everything was fine, that I hadn't left anything in the fridge. Fortunately. Thank you for listening to Ochenta Stories. This story was written by Milagros Rodriguez Caro. Milagros is a certified English-French-Spanish translator, an Argentinian-Spanish teacher, and also a French teacher from Buenos Aires, Argentina. She also speaks German, Italian, and Farsi, and has a weekly newsletter where she writes and edits texts related to languages, language learning, and translation. You can find more of her work at www.milalanguages.com. The Spanish version was performed by Milagros Rodriguez Caro, Sol Rodriguez Caro, and Belén Ariscorve. The English version was performed by Haley Choi, Maru Lombardo, and Lori Martinez. The sound design of the piece was by me, Luis López. If you like what you heard, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts in whatever language you choose. Follow us over at Ochenta Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram for updates. You can find transcripts and learn more about the project over at ochentastudio.com slash ochentastories. And before we go, a quick announcement. All 12 episodes of Cultureverse, the show Studio Ochenta produced alongside tracks on PRX, are now up. If you haven't listened yet, it's a show that brings myths and legends alive into the modern world and inspires listeners to learn more about the cultures that surround them hosted by Kelly Marie Tran and Yara Shahidi. For more information about the project, check out ochentastudio.com.